Hey everyone, this is Jason Cummins from Bucket Imports. Uh, I want to kind of go over a particular car that we work on a lot of. Um, it's actually two different lines, but this particular engine and drivetrain goes in both of these cars. It's a Range Rover Sport and a lot of the F-Type Jaguars. They have basically the same engine. It's a V6 supercharged and a V8 supercharged. So I want you to come in and check it out. Basically, what we're going to kind of go over on this vehicle is the, the Jaguars and the Range Rovers on these platforms don't have coolant lights. Um, they don't have a coolant gauge. They don't have a temp gauge. Basically, it has a low coolant light and tells you you need to kind of stop and come over and get off the road, you know, because this car is overheating. Um, other platforms like BMWs and Mercedes, when these cars overheat, uh, those cars overheat, they'll actually shut the car off when the temperature gets too hot in the vehicle. So it'll actually save the engine. On these particular platforms, it runs it until the motor basically stops running and it does damage, just like it did on this one. So this is a 2014 uh, Range Rover Sport. This is a V8 supercharged quad cam V8. Uh, this particular engine, uh, the customer was driving down the road and the low coolant light came on. Uh, so he thought that it was gonna be good enough to drive, because he was close to the dealership, drove to a dealership. They found out that there was a piece of plastic uh, tubing or, or hose basically that's underneath the supercharger which I'll show you in just a little while uh, those crack or they start to leak well this one did that the dealership charged them almost five thousand dollars to replace this particular piece of plastic which I'll show you on this table in a second and they got the car cranked back up and it did damage to the engine and it blew what they call the head gasket or a cylinder head gasket and I'm going to also show you that but this particular engine has an aluminum cylinder head and an aluminum block, and it's terrible to overheat these things. Let me show you a couple of things on this table over here. We've, uh, we've already had these cylinder heads sent off already. Um, these cylinder heads uh, were warped three thousandths, um, which is not a lot, but in between a metal head gasket and the bottom end or the block, it doesn't take much for that gasket to lift up and then coolant starts going into the combustion chamber and once it goes into the combustion chamber, it's smoking out the rear end of the car. Um, probably some people have seen this. The car still runs on all eight cylinders, but it's starting to overheat and blow coolant into the exhaust system and out the back. Um, this is the surface of the head. Um, we had these heads reworked at our machine shop. Basically what they do is they stick this thing on a, on a platform and it basically shaves off um, the, the warpness of this and puts these back flat so that we can install this back on the car again. Um, these particular cylinder heads have already been worked with. They're ready to go back on the car. Um, we're going to reuse all new gaskets, um, you know, valve cover gaskets, cylinder head gaskets. Uh, we have to replace the cylinder head bolts. Um, this is one of the head bolts that's on the car. This is a stretch bolt. So basically this long bolt, there's uh, two, four, six, eight, ten. There's almost 12 of these that go that hold the cylinder head down and these have to be torque angled to, to make sure that this head stays on the vehicle. Um, these are one time use. Once they overheat and they get hot or you take the cylinder head off, you have to take these and you throw them away, you put new ones on it. Um, this is also the supercharger that's right here. Um, this is actually what's on top of both of those cylinder heads. And while this car's running, there's a belt that runs and you can see down in the bottom of this, which is kind of cool. This is how the air gets sucked into the supercharger and then it blows it into the engine to give it a lot more horsepower. So this is kind of a, a, a cool you know, system that they're putting on a lot of these cars. Uh, Mercedes and BMW have gone to turbocharged. Uh, Audi's done turbocharged. Audi's had a lot of superchargers. Um, so that's, those are kind of a cool aspect, but it also makes the engine hot. All right, so the next thing I want to show you is one of the faults that this car has and the reason that we're doing this job is this is a plastic hose that actually bolts down to the top of the engine. This thing goes to the basically one of the other plastic tubes and some water pump and this is what coolant goes through the engine. This piece of plastic right here will actually crack and break and when it does, coolant runs down underneath the, the valley and you have a low coolant light and you think, well, I'm just a little bit low on coolant. At that point, you need to pull the car over and instantly have the car towed. Um, I know it's very bad. Sometimes you need to get into a good spot to, to you know, have the car towed, but at this particular you know, chassis and this body and this model, you need to pull the car over immediately because you'll do a job that's like this. And the dealerships do not replace head gaskets. So when you go in, they're gonna try to sell you an entire engine instead of just trying to fix the gasket that's actually blown. And that's what we're doing on this particular model. I'll show you where this hose goes now.
So we're looking at the engine now. This is the front of the car. We've got both of the cylinder heads off, the supercharger's off. Basically, it's down to the bare block, which is the bottom end is what we call this. This particular pipe basically goes down and it bolts right to the top of the block right here. Well, you have the cylinder heads, you have the supercharger that's right here, and this entire tube is covered by all of these parts that I'm explaining. So when this breaks, you have to take the supercharger completely off of the car. You don't have to take the cylinder heads off like I've done here, but this particular situation, you have to take the supercharger off, which is a very extensive job. It's roughly about four or $5,000 just to replace this piece of plastic right here. And this was the cause of this particular job. They pay the dealership to do this job and to take this pipe off. And then they put the whole car back together and the car unfortunately had a blown head gasket. So they had to pay for this repair and then they've had the car sent to us. We're replacing the cylinder head gaskets and we'll get the car back up on the road. It hasn't done any damage to the bottom end. Uh, the block is good. Uh, we have something called a straight edge that we check to see if the heads are warped and that's what it was. If the heads were warped around basically three millimeters or three thousand, excuse me. Uh, the cylinder head gasket it's pretty heavy duty, uh, but it's made out of metal, um, different plies of it, and then they have basically a coating or a plastic coating that once you bolt the cylinder head down, it seals the cylinder head down to the bottom of the block. Um, so unfortunately, once that head starts to warp in the middle, that 3000s, it doesn't take much, it lifts the head up, and then coolant starts to go into the engine, and then it goes basically burned out the back, and it overheats the car as well. So. This is something that I wanted to kind of explain to a lot of people. Um, these particular model cars, these are great cars. They, when they're running and driving, they're absolutely fantastic. They're plush inside. People love these vehicles, but certain things like this and knowing about these pieces of plastic that are underneath the supercharger that basically crack and break, uh, this particular item we're starting to see as early as 60,000, as late as 90,000. but. In between that year, or basically that mileage, is when this pipe is, is breaking and it's just so hot in the engine compartment, it's what's causing this to, to fail. Um, can you check it when you come in for service? Absolutely. You could drive out of my shop after doing an oil change and two blocks later, this could crack and break. You never know when it is. And what I'm trying to tell you is when this thing has a low coolant light, you need to pull the car over and you need to stop and have it towed to either your independent shop like we are, or you need to get it to a dealership so that they can replace this piece and not do any damage to your engine. All right, there's a couple other things that I really wanted to make, you know, uh, to tell some people about when you're doing these jobs. You've got to have the special tools to do these types of things. Um, to lock the camshafts down, to disconnect the lower crank pulley on these cars, you have to have the factory tools on these things so that you can get this thing back in time properly, you can take it apart properly, and you can put it back together properly. All, everything down to this is a uh, this is basically a crank uh, a crank pin that holds the the bottom of the uh, the crankshaft in. Um, it, it holds it in place. A couple of the other things. Uh, this is a very awkward tool, but this is what takes out the fuel injectors in this car. This car has a high pressure fuel system. It's basically it wraps around the top of the the injector, and then you basically have to pull this thing up and down to to pull the injector out of the cylinder head. The back of the, the camshafts on this car, you have the cylinder head, you've got the camshaft that lays inside it. This is a huge piece of metal that have little plates in it and you have to line the backs of the camshafts up and it locks the camshafts in place so that you can basically put the timing chain back in time on the, the car properly and correctly. This is another huge tool. This is a, a crank tool that locks the, the lower crankshaft in spot so that you can take the lower crank bolt out of it. it this thing's torqued down to 200 foot pounds and, and I think it also has a 90 degree uh, torque angle on it as well. I have to double check that. But this tool, I mean, it's super heavy duty. You have to have these. Now, I'm the shop owner. All the cars, Mercedes, Range Rovers, BMWs, all the stuff that we work on, we have to buy these tools so that we can fix the cars properly just like the dealerships do. It costs a lot of money, but I wanna make sure that I get the customers taken care of.